Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to our 69th webinar. It is the 69th webinar. Yeah. So um, we're delighted to be uh, with you again today. My name is Chris Morrison. And I'm Jane Secker. And we are the co-chairs of the Alt Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group, yeah. in addition to a few other things. We, we we do have a number of hats. We do. We're not wearing actual We're not wearing hats any today. Hats. We're wearing t-shirts. Uh, though. We are wearing t-shirts. Why well, yeah. I just uh, muted our slides for a moment, so if you were able to see us, we've got some t-shirts on. Yep. More of which on why we chose these t-shirts later. Coming up. Yes. Um, so yeah, do you want to get those slides back up again, and then we can share with people what happened? Yeah, we've got an exciting um, number of things to talk about today. So let's let's get going. Um, so we'll go through our since we last met. We've it's been a month or so since our last Indeed. webinar. What goes on in of course, the copyright literacy world we want to share? We have some copyright news, yeah, absolutely. which we're looking forward to. But the stars of the show, we have three presenters joining us today mm -hmm. um, in our Becoming a Copyright Specialist Part 4 or 1V. Uh, and I immediately spotted... Yes. But of course, that corresponds to Star Wars Episode One B, A New Hope. Yes. So play play the music. I haven't got the music. You no. tell me to get a Star Wars thing, huh? <laughs> oh. No, we're really delighted that we've got um, three. I probably could. If you want no, to. don't worry no, about right, it, please. Don't worry about it. So we have Liesl, we have Megan. Uh, Megan, and we have Eugene joining us to talk about their journey into copyright, which will be the bulk of the session. Mm -hmm. And then we'll tell you about what's coming up next. Yes, yeah. so we've got another webinar lined up next month, which is going to be really exciting. Absolutely. So let's get cracking. Since we last met. Oh yes. Yeah. So this is this week. Um, Who I've, is that nerd? I, I've Who is got that nerd? A folding bike. <laughs> I've been I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. It's and here red I am. as well. It's red. It's your favourite colour. It's like the same. It matches my car, doesn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Um, it's lovely. So it's red. And everyone knows that red bikes go faster. Yeah. So I thought this is to me just before I went down to the chip fish and chip shop. <laughs> I got the fish and what I'm wearing on my back is a, a, a thermal bag. So I was back at home within two minutes of getting the fish and chips. And they were piping hot. And and you folded and unfolded the bike in the process. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. It seems yeah. a bit unnecessary to take a fish and no, no, a, no, a it's, folding it's, bike to a fish and chip shop. It's yeah. Yeah. Black. See, the thing is, Catherine, I I, I was I was <laughs> under advisement to get a black one, and then when I turned up, the red one was like over a hundred pounds cheaper. Mm. So there we go. Last season's colour, but I don't care. Mm. Right. And, and what, what were you up to? Where were you? And who are these people? Oh, so this this is me on Monday. This mm. is me with my um, library and information studies students at City. Um, I have about a 20, well, I actually have 29 students this year yeah. um, that I'm looking after. Um, I've been looking after them since September. And we had a really fantastic day out at um, Cambridge. We went to the university library, we went to some college libraries, mm -hmm. we went to some department libraries. It hailed on us twice. <laughs> um, I concluded that I didn't want to be a tour guide, I think. Um, halfway through the day when I managed to lose one of the students. You're, you see, you're normally one of the cats being herded rather than the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So, but that was at the point where we were about to head back and I had, I'd found everybody and I was very happy and they'd all had a really nice time. So very grateful to lots of Cambridge colleagues who yeah. gave up their time and we had a fantastic day out. Yeah. So there we are. There are other libraries that are better than that one. I don't know which. I don't know that there are. I can't think of any. I can't, Only slightly. I can't a, think. I can't think of any. By so. an oar's length. Okay. So, right. Let's get on. Let's crack on. So, um, for those of you tuning in regularly, you know we have a, a an archive of all our webinars up on the blog. We also have um, a YouTube. A playlist that alt run for us where you can tune in and yeah. catch up on any of the webinars you might have missed and we're actually we, we won't announce anything yet but we are looking at ways where we can make this material and the previous webinars available in a way that's that's more easily findable and yeah. sort of curated so um, with dois and things all like that. that kind of stuff yes. so yeah. watch this space yeah we had a great meeting about that um this week didn't mm -hmm. we okay so where are we now it's time for everyone's favorite Okay. It's copyright. Copyright news. news. What's okay. happening in the world of copyright? Yeah. Um, we uh, have first up uh, an event that's taking place on the second of May, 
um, which I will be speaking at. I'll be on a panel. It's about collective licensing um, and a workshop on copyright solutions being hosted at UCL. Um, and the National Library of Sweden are a, a driving force behind this. Um, and they will be talking about uh, it's their EOD Open uh, project. Um, it's about cross-border licensing, mm -hmm. extended collective licensing, collective licensing solutions, um, what the, the Swedish and the Scandinavians have had for many years and how does this work potentially in uh, other countries and in the UK. Um, so it's going to be very relevant to those of us who work in this area. And it's in person and it's free, I think, it isn't is it, person, as well? And and it there is, is free, limited yeah. spaces available. So if you fancy going along to that, then uh, check that out. Yeah. And thanks, Catherine, to pop the link in if anyone wants to book that. Uh, next up, um, we have a, another event, actually, that we're both involved in. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Sconnell um, are hosting an event on the 8th of May uh, about the topic of controlled digital lending. Some of you may know that we have been involved in doing some work with Sconnell, with RL UK and with JISC. And uh, there is uh, a report that will be available to Sconnell members um, very soon. I don't think it is available yet, but you can come along to find out um, about that report and find out some of the, the work that we've been doing on the 8th of May, if you're interested in that. The link says page not found. Aha, we will find a proper link. Alison, is uh, that the Sconnell one that's not working? We will. Yeah, we will. We will double check for that. Yeah. OK. All right. We'll see if we can find that um, and send that around. Well, we can advertise that on List Copy Seek as well, can't we? Yes, I think we already have. If we haven't, we'll do it again. Yeah. OK. What's up next? So up next is a reminder that uh, next uh, month there is the Silip Copyright Conference, which is on the focus on AI. Um, and that's an online session. So that's just reminding you that that's there. Yeah. 23rd of May. So mm. May's going to be a busy month for copyright I events. Think it will be. Yeah. And this is a previous event it I is. wanted to flag up um, that I, I think we mentioned at our last webinar. Um, oh, brilliant, Catherine. She's found a link, hopefully, that works. Um, previous event um, we ran in, Ma uh, in March, at the end of March, um, on information literacy and AI. Over 150 librarians came along to that. There's a write-up of that event. Um, there is also a recording of this event somewhere as well, mm. um, which I think if it isn't on the blog post, I shall get it added to the blog post. Mm. So, but that's uh, that was a really fascinating discussion and actually led really nicely into lots of discussions that took place in person at the Lilac conference about the impact that AI was having on all sorts of aspects of work we do in libraries. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine, for sharing that one. Um, and <gasps> we're doing ice pops this year and we said we weren't going to do it. And in fact, we thought, well, it was just it's a lot let's, of work to do let's it. Let's just do it like in a little way. In okay. a little let's just do it in a little way. Oh, wait, so in your pocket. This is Ice Pops Pocket Edition. Um, it's happening in September uh, from the 5th to the 6th. The main event will be on the 5th. Mm -hmm. the, what makes it a pocket edition is we've slimmed it down. Mm -hmm. We will be having one keynote, one afternoon of sort of the main stuff, still the evening social, still the things the next day and we're gonna have an AGM of the course. We're trying to get that price down as we are, low we're as looking we at because we appreciate entirely yeah. that uh, training budgets are stretched and there's always this well why can't you just do everything online? We know why you can't do everything online. Mm. We can't get together in person as a community and uh, talk um, to each other face to face and that's why we want to do this. We've already got some sponsorship lined up. Yeah. So huge thanks to uh, to the era. Yes, um, I see Helen is on the call. Thank yeah, you very much. And uh, CLA yes. and also to the Association for Learning Technology yeah. so far. Yeah. Um, so if anybody else knows it was part of an organization or wants to sponsor, we will be trying to get as much sponsorship as we can to help keep that price down. Yeah. Um, and to be able to give people some nice biscuits. And things, uh, yes. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The plan is we're not going to provide lunch, but we will be starting from about half past one. On, yeah. on the 5th of September, um, we'll have a full packed afternoon of excellent stuff. I thought you were going to say a packed lunch. Uh, no, packed lunch. Well, <laughs> you can bring a packed lunch if you want. We won't be providing a packed lunch. Uh, we will be providing some cake. But the, the details will be coming out soon. We just yeah. wanted you all to know 
save the date uh, and if you can start sort of lining that up scraping if you, together if you think it's pennies. possible uh, and huge thanks uh, to Liesl for uh, uh, helping us organize the venue yeah um, and we felt that given we want to make this as accessible as possible we wanted to have it somewhere in the middle of our great island nation absolutely yes um, so it's and up we're north. better than in leeds we're better than leeds in fact yes there's some more interesting news oh aren't yeah there as so well. there is so we so said there's a keynote there is who's the keynote who could the keynote be somebody quite anybody want to put a guess in the chat <laughs> they'll probably say people that are better no they, there's nobody better than our keynote <laughs> because it is none other than kyle k courtney from harvard Harvard's copyright advisor, the um, most excellent, glamorous, <laughs> glamorous uh, exuberant, fantastic. He's not only got a silver sparkly jacket, he's got a gold sparkly jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got many bow ties. Yes, indeed. And he is the man to talk to about controlled digital lending. Yes. And pretty much anything else really that happens in copyright and library world. Yeah. So we're delighted that Carl's going to come. He's been there every single Ice Pops so far. We know that we were disappointed that he came to Glasgow, but then became very ill and wasn't able to come to the main session. Yeah. So this will be an excellent opportunity to really do that. And I think, are we able to make a further announcement? No. No, nothing <laughs> else. OK. <laughs> I nothing. thought we were. I oh, did, we right. did discuss it. Go on then. I just thought we would let people know that one of the reasons why we weren't going to do Ice Pops in the UK this year is because we are going to do it in the US next year, 2025. Harvard will be hosting the first truly international on the other side of the Atlantic mm -hmm. Ice Pop. Now, that detail is not coming out. We're not going to put anything else out there. No, know. not but yet. We thought we'd let you know because that was one of the reasons why we wanted to do it here. We didn't want to leave it might be tricky we know for uk people to make it over there yeah but we thought absolutely. we'd let you know in advance that's the plan and so we'll be working with kyle to make that happen okay enough yes, enough of this enough excitement well more excitement more now excitement. we need to get on to the main event yes, so we, we are absolutely delighted to have uh three uh copyright specialists joining mm -hmm. us for this session we do we have liesel uh roe from leeds beckett university who i think is going to go up first and speak um, we're just going to get her slides up and ready, um, but also delighted to have Megan Kilvington from York St. John University and Eugene Stoika from University of Edinburgh. And uh, we were actually going to get Eugene to go first, but we hadn't had some issues with his slides. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to. this will work so okay give us a moment okay um otherwise maybe we should we check if Liesl's ready to go um okay. you're, yeah you're all good to go okay. should we do that yeah um let's do that so okay if you don't mind we'll just switch switching things order. around yeah okay Liesl take it away delighted to have you join us thank you sure thing um so hi everyone um you've been getting a lot of Leeds Beckett content today between the uh Ice Pops Pocket Edition and now me. Um, so basically, I have been in post at Leeds Beckett for going on 10 months now, coming up for a year in June. Um, and that was my first copyright focused job. So I'm still quite early in my copyright journey. Um, while I've done sort of plenty of work around copyright in some of my previous roles, uh, it is a really different thing being that point of contact at an institution. So I'm just going to talk through a little bit how I got here and how it's all going. Um, so moving on, um, just to give you a potted career history. So I had a bit of a winding road before alighting on libraries. Um, as you might tell from my, my Shakespeare Studies MA, I was very much originally thinking I want to go into academia, I want to work in universities, but I want to sort of go the research route. And a summer spent studying at the BL made it pretty clear for me, I don't like solitary research. I like going out, I like talking to people, sparking those conversations and then coming back and applying it in my practice. Um, so I sort of thought, no, PhD not for me. What am I going to do now? Tried a few different things, um, including recruitment, before I wound up in libraries in a sort of school context. So I was in an inner city London school 
as an assistant librarian, which honestly was the best first job. Um, I really love school libraries as an early career role in particular, um, as you end up being a bit of jack of all trades. You end up doing a bit of anything, whatever the school needs you to turn your hand to, you will be doing it. Um, and it's great when you want specialised later going, I really like this thing. Um, but I did ultimately want to come back to universities. And when reorganisation happened at my school, I ended up moving to the University of West London. And I was working in their acquisitions department, mainly around their interlibrary loans. Um, I was one half of that team who did the interlibrary loans. And we were very much looking at copyright as part of that. How much were we allowed to give people? Uh, what were we allowed to resource? Um, please, can we not source things from ResearchGate, that kind of thing. So that was sort of the beginning of copyright was creeping into my career. Um, but I think it's also fair to say that my time in academic libraries was really marked by the pandemic. Um, I had the spectacular timing of passing my probation and lockdown happened a week or two later. Um, so I'd moved into a new sector of libraries and was wanting to start building that network, but we're all online. There weren't the sort of easy uh, conferences or ways of getting out and, and building connections between institutions. Um, we also, as a service, were really having to be reactive. Um, we were constantly having to adapt to the needs of our students to make sure they got what they needed resource-wise. Um, Again, more copyright creeping in there. We did a lot of scan and deliver, um, sourcing a new scanner and providing extracts for students who just weren't able to get in for different reasons. Um, and the fact that we were really reactive made me think, actually, I'd be really interested to see how a more digital library works. Um, also, I admit, I wanted to move up to Yorkshire. I wanted to be close to family. Um, so I applied for Arden University, which is an entirely remote library. They don't really have a library management system, um, but the entire library is digital. It's available wherever. They have a policy of every book, if at all possible, should be unlimited access. Um, so that was a real priority for them. And again, that was a real jack of all trades job. There were about four of us in the library when I started. Um, I think I think it's fair to say we we're going on for 15 when I left. Um, so massive expansion. Um, and then I moved over to Leeds Beckett, where I am to use the official job title, Senior Digital Library Advisor. But really, I'm the copyright person. Uh, so how, how did I get here? Um, it had been coming up on those fringes of everything I'd been doing. It, it was very much a thing I was presently aware of. Um, but Arden, I think it's fair to say, was my first real chance to get stuck in and gain a few skills. Um, and it all started with a bit of a moment of chance um, and me being very curious. Um, one of our main tasks was checking modules to make sure that we had got all the books we needed for that course, um, that students could access them, that it all looked fine. And as I was checking through the module, I realised that we had quite a few images within the module, which it looked like we didn't have copyright permission for. Um, and this module was due to launch in, I think, two weeks. So it was very much a case of chance. I happened to be working that course and I sat down with the academic um, to sort out all the issues in time and did a lot of sort of research of, well, what could we get away with as fair use? What is fine? no, we can't really get away with that one. It very explicitly says, please don't use. Um, and we're using quite a bit of content. So, it, and then supplying other options. I really enjoyed that collaborative process with the academic. I really enjoyed that kind of balancing risk and considering, well, this is fine under exceptions, but we're getting to the point where um, publishers wouldn't be happy with us or we're not supplying a good service to our students. Uh, so when the position came up at Leeds Beckett, I, I went for it, having sort of unofficially become the person that if um, some of the other people doing module checking had copyright issues, they'd sort of come and ask me and say, hey, Liesl, you had that horrible module, how did you do it? It was somewhat intimidating shoes to step into. Um, those of you who know Leeds Beckett, 
might be aware, my predecessor was Rachel Thornton, who was in post 35 years. And I think I did check this while writing my talk, was the only person to have actually held the, the copyright position. Meanwhile, I'm still relatively new in my library career, um, about six years in the sector, um, and relatively small network, again, due to COVID. Um, so it was a bit sort of intimidating, but I rose to the challenge. Um, and I thought, sort of, first thing I did was I sat down and made a bit of a game plan. Um, so step one, the copyright service had very much become synonymous with my predecessor. So I needed to make sure people knew I existed and what I did. Um, so I've spent a lot of this first year in creating different forms of interactive outreach. Um, so some people might have seen, uh, I put it on the, um, the mailing list. Uh, so we've got some quick copyright guide videos targeted at staff and students. We've got some blog posts. I've used things like AI as a route to talking about issues that I know academics are interested in, but coming at it from the copyright point of view. Um, and I was really grateful to Alex Fenton and some other people who've done a lot of work on that, which I found very helpful. Um, but it's not always copyright related either. Um, being that enthusiastic person who will step up to volunteer during clearing or will sort of come forward during the staff show and tell, um, people are getting to know I'm a friendly face, I'm very approachable, and it means people in other departments are starting to come and talk to me if they've got copyright queries. There's also a case of looking at what we're currently doing and seeing are we getting the bang for our buck? Um, so looking at our copyright statistics, when I'm sort of sitting down and trying to work out where everything is mapped, I realised that most of our queries were coming from the library itself. We weren't really getting external people coming in and asking questions about copyright. So I wanted to make sure that other library members felt empowered to talk about copyright, um, to help me in my, my efforts to do a bit of outreach. Um, so one of the first things I did was put together a simple double side A4 sheet, um, which is basic guidance of here are all the quick copyright things I think you might run into. Also, here are some warning flags of when it might be an idea to come talk to me and I'll help. Step two, as you can probably also guess from those stats, there's a bit of a case of I'm needing to get to academics. I've got pretty good outreach in the library, but I'm needing that wider university context. So I've been finding that I need to look at offering my services to different bits of the library, different bits of the university where I think I can be helpful. Um, so if there's a conference internally, I will try and go and talk to it or I will go along and see what people are doing. Um, I will also try and talk to different departments within the library. So my background in interlibrary loans, they were one of the first teams I went to talk to because I knew how they worked and where I could be helpful to them. But it's also been networking externally. Um, things like this webinar series has been fantastic for me in having a community I can come to for advice as I'm trying to upskill. And I very much tried to build on the work of other people. Um, so, for instance, we're currently in the process of introducing a can I use this resource guide, which is modelled off of the University of Manchester's. Um, and I've also run a few very successful workshops based around the Creative Commons attribution card game after having played the demo at Ice Pops. But it's also really important not just to be rolling out initiatives, but to reflect not everything is going to be a winner. So every time I've started a new project, I've tried to take time to look back on what's worked well and what hasn't, so I know where to improve. Working towards my chartership and my HEA fellowship is quite helpful for that, as it's given me a bit of a structure for reflecting on what I'm doing. But I've also made a point of trying to talk through what I'm doing with other people and reflect on it both with my manager, but also signing up for the mentorship scheme through Academic Libraries North, which has been fantastic. Step four, ask questions. Um, when you've got someone in post for a long time, it is very easy to have a set way of doing things because that's the way it's always been. Um, this is actually where my newness is a bit of a benefit. 
as while I'm learning the job, I'm really prepared to ask questions of why are we doing something a certain way or what is the meaning behind something else? There are a few things I can point to where my viewing things through fresh eyes have made us review old systems. So at the moment, we're currently reviewing how students engage with our digitised extracts. As I did a bit of analysis and realised we've probably got 50% of those extracts not being looked at by students. Um, and Lisa, that's just one more minute. Sorry. <laughs> just, no, just sorry. We're all good. Right. I'm on my final point. Uh, final five. Um, proof, future proofing. Obviously, I'm coming in filling very experienced shoes and the jump to copyright is an aspect I need to focus on, plus the entirety of my time now. I need to build in fallbacks, particularly as when I start this job, I had a quite long period of annual leave coming up. So I knew I needed to not just leave them in the lurch. So I've centralised our inbox. So instead of me as named copyright person, it comes to the copyright team. And I've trained up several other staff members so they're confident to deal with sort of more basic inquiries, but obviously they can refer uh, it to me. Um, and that is pretty much me. Thank you very much. Sorry, whistle stop tour. It's not me. Ah. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Lisa. You. Oh, that's great. That was really good. Thank you very much. And sorry to just have to interject there. I was just wanted to make sure we get a chance to hear from all our speakers. So but <laughs> next we're going to have questions at the end. Um, so I'm hoping that we're able to get Eugene's slides to load. OK, yeah, it should be. Let's have a go. Yeah. Let's see what happens, Eugene. So if you just get ready. OK, there we go. So our next speaker um, from the University of Edinburgh is Eugene Stoiker. So take it away, Eugene. Okay, um, thank you very much. I can, yeah, you can see me now. Um, so um, my path to become a copyright specialist is slightly different than most of my colleagues. Um, to start with, um, I've heard um, many colleagues before uh, describing them, themselves as creative persons. Uh, to be honest, if I have to describe myself, creative would not be the first word that would come to mind. Maybe pragmatic, practical. Anyway, so um, let's continue. Um, I'm Romanian, obviously not uh, British. Um, I will uh, start with um, my undergraduate degree. Uh, which was a very long time ago in Bucharest at the University of Bucharest, the law school, finished in 1996. Then um, I got a job uh, with the insurance company, four years where I learned the ropes of uh, working in a large company. Um, then I um, signed up for another, for a master degree in private law at the University of Bucharest as well, which was an interesting experience. Um, and then for two years, I worked for the Department of Agriculture uh, with the Romanian government. It was a most interesting um, experience. I um, ended up working for a governmental agency that was in charge of privatizing the state-owned farms. Um, and uh, there was a lot of interest for these farms. Um, there were a lot of uh, vineyards. There were a lot of uh, farms who had uh, in excess of 10,000 acres of agricultural land. Uh, but they also have huge debts. So, there were a lot of uh, bidders. Um, the negotiations were very uh, intense. Um, I, I had the pleasure of working with some uh, very experienced uh, public servants who were fantastic at their job. Uh, to, they were very good at uh, separating the, the wheat from the chaff to use a, 
an agricultural expression uh, they they were uh, very quick to to say wow that's a, a political problem it should be discussed in the parliament or this one is a social problem it should be discussed uh, with the unions representatives and so on we um, um, I was part of the team who drafted the, the bill for privatization of these farms and also drafted the methodology that would uh, govern the privatization, the process. Um, it, 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 like I said, from a professional point of view, it was most interesting. We, we had to uh, use constitutional law, administrative law, civil law, obviously, financial law, even criminal law, pretty much everything except intellectual property law. Um, but um, there was another aspect. Uh, sometimes these negotiations, like I said, were uh, intense, but sometimes I felt that I'm in a movie, um, you know, like in a mix of in the loop with, um, the Gentleman by uh, Guy Ritchie, uh, having to deal with uh, some pretty dodgy characters and uh, companies. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, so um, after a while, I realized that um, that was a dead end for me. So I decided to take a step uh, lateral and um, um, I uh, was accepted uh, for a master's degree here in Edinburgh. Um, and then um, while um, after graduation, I got my first job um, as a shelver uh, at the university in the library, which was probably the best job I ever had. My shift was from uh, 7 to 10 in the evening. It was quiet. Um, peaceful. I was going with the trolley between the shelves and uh, I was uh, very often finding my, myself reading from the books instead of putting them back on the shelves. Um, anyway, from 2007, I started working with the University of Edinburgh. So that's 17 years now. Um, and I did a master degree in intellectual property from 2013. Um, so I, when I started working with the University of Edinburgh, uh, I was the library research assessment exercise officer for the for 2008 REF, uh, RAE. Um, after the submission, I was offered a um, uh, definitive position, open-ended position as a repository officer. So I did a lot of advocacy. Um, and this is how I got in, I got in touch with the concept of open access and copyright. So my first impression uh, regarding the copyright issues in academia in the UK um, was that it, it is a, a very elaborated uh, prank and I was at the center of it. All my colleagues were in for the joke. I was reading the, the law, Copyright Designs and Patent Act, which says that the employer owns the copyright and my colleagues were all telling me, no, 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 it's the authors who own the copyright. H how is this possible? I don't understand. Anyway, so um, later I um, joined the copyright team in the library and to make sure that um, I have a good knowledge of the um, copyright and uh, intellectual property in general, I did. Uh, I uh, signed up for a master with the University of Edinburgh. Um, then I was following um, the developments of the negotiations that uh, happened around the UK scholarly communication license with a lot of interest and enthusiasm. And of course, I was disappointed that uh, this didn't uh, kind of stopped in, into the uh, uh, tall grass. Um, then I was um, 
asked if I would like to become the service manager for the copyright team of the library, which I was uh, happy to accept, glad to accept. So, um, Eugene, can we uh, if, can we give you two more minutes? Is two more minutes enough? Yeah. Thank you. Of course, yeah. So um, then there was another um, ref exercise with a dissertation. Um, I started doing uh, training sessions with uh, Charlie from 2016, and then we started working on the um, copyright policy that was adopted in 2000 in 21. Um, and from 2022, uh, I have a new uh, job title and job description. Uh, so now I'm part of the uh, scholarly communications team. We are the guardians of open access at the University of Edinburgh. And as mm -hmm. you can see, I, I am Groot. Um, <laughs> on a more uh, reflective note, I would say that uh, copyright is pretty much like tax law, if you are aware of the um, of it, of the uh, requirements, you can um, save a lot of money, it can save you a lot of money, and also it, uh, it can help you to make a lot of money. Um, personally, I think that uh, we should work a little bit closer with our colleagues from legal services. Um, I think that this this uh, separation between copyright and legal services is not natural. We we can benefit from uh, working together. Um, yes. What else? I I um, I think it matters a lot to listen uh, carefully to what people are saying, what they are asking. Uh, ask questions if you are not entirely clear about uh, what they want. Uh, there is no pressure to give a quick answer. I always leave draft my answers and leave them overnight. Um, I um, yes, I'm an introvert, and this might be problematic when I have to explain to academics to to people. Um, but I, I'm aware of the problem and I'm, I'm trying to overcome it. Um, it's, it's, I think it's extremely important to have an open mind and to challenge um, things that people are saying. If someone is saying there is no other way or this is the only way, you should always ask yourself why, why, what happened if I do something different or if I go against the current. Um, yes, so um, I think uh, this is my presentation. I think you find it uh, mildly interesting. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Eugene. That was fantastic. And for someone who describes himself as not creative, mm. what a beautiful set of slides. What lovely. Are they all your photographs? Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, they're I lovely. They would be, yeah, yeah you are a fantastic photographer. Yeah. So you're a very creative person. Thank you. And what, you brought your lovely camera and took some lovely photos when, when you hosted us in Edinburgh at Ice Pops. Absolutely. Um, yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, let we, we will move <clears> on then, won't we? To, and then we'll go to um, some questions. To Megan's yeah. uh, uh, slides. So they will be up there in a moment. Yeah, just give Megan, me a moment, are Megan. You, here we go. Are you on the mic? Uh, yes, I am. Here you Fabulous. are, excellent. There we go, there's your slides, Megan. Over so to you. Take Thank it away. You. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm just going to talk about my journey of becoming a copyright specialist. Um, so, I'm currently um, a trainee librarian at York St. John University, and I've got the longest title in the library. So, I'm the copyright licensing and research librarian. Um, so, I have three distinct areas. Um, but copyright overlaps into all of them. And my role is with different um, library teams. Um, so I can help with academic services and kind of the content teams as well. Um, I'm also the university's lead for data management and open data. Um, so I'm always very, very busy. 
Um, I'm currently in my 11th month of a one year training period. Um, so that's coming up close. Um, and I'm kind of really excited to kind of, yeah, become a complete librarian. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't say that I was actually destined to be a copyright librarian, but kind of reflecting back on this, um there's lots of kind of copyright elements in sort of my past and what i've done um, that kind of makes me quite suited to this role um so after a levels i took one year out from university as i wasn't sure what i wanted to do um i ended up uh, going to the university of hull and i studied philosophy um and looking back in some of the areas that i was interested in um elements of copyright and um, credit kind of appeared. Um, for example, I was really interested in aesthetics and kind of fake and forgery, um, kind of ownership and kind of taking rights away from people, what is real, what is fake. And yeah, um, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, looking back, um, I then went on to study a master's with medical in medical history at the University of York. Um, and I was involved in a lot of research projects related to kind of my studies and also additional university based projects. Um, I remember being particularly interested in photo permissions of objects uh, for different assignments. I visited museums to gather photos of like historical fabrics, for example, um, and I had to fill out kind of per uh, permission forms and contracts outlining what I could do with those images. Um, and I found that really interesting. Um, I was also part of an internship at the university, focusing on the creation and launch of a printing press studio within the English department. Um, and I was a research intern and I looked into the history and the development of the printing press and the activity of printing. Um, and parts of that research investigated censorship and the restrictions of printing to certain cities and individuals and the rise of commercial printing. And one really interesting thing that I found out was uh, one of the university libraries was actually the York um, uh, hub for the King's printer. And um, so I found that really interesting that I actually worked in the same building where uh, one of the uh, one of the two uh, cities that could print in the north. Um, so. Um, during my master's, I began volunteering and then later working in museums uh, across different teams and I ran different activities and projects related to collections. Um, so I ran object handling sessions for visitors um, with real museum objects and I was also involved in lots of collection management activities. So I did a lot of auditing and documents, documenting of items within the stores. And I found myself really curious about the ownership of items and the journey into museums, as well as trying to trace the owners or the creators as a further activity um, just for me. Um, so getting into libraries, due to various factors, I decided to look beyond the museum sector um, for a more permanent role. And after kind of realising that glam sector was a thing, I realised that a lot of my skills were transferable to libraries. I also had a great experience of using university libraries during my studies, um, and I spent a lot of time in them and having the support of really knowledgeable and helpful staff. I um, thought it could be a really nice place to kind of get a different perspective of libraries. Um, so my first role was at the University of York, where I studied, um, and I was a part time information assistant within the main library. Um, I was initially based in the customer services team and I gained a lot of experience quickly um, dealing with a variety of queries uh, related to library work and research. During this time, I also completed a level three online library course as a CPT activity. Um, and this kind of made me even more interested in libraries and I sort of wanted to take it further. Um, so not long after beginning my role, um, lockdown happened um so like many others kind of this hands-on physical service that was dynamic transformed into being a digital service without any warning um, i'd also just signed up for a library and information management course at the university of sheffield um, luckily this was already intended as an online distance course uh, so nothing had to be changed there um, and i'm just glad that 
it kind of happened when it did so I could kind of focus on working remotely while also studying as well it kept my brain occupied although it was really challenging uh, working remotely during lockdown did give me lots of opportunities to work across different teams on the different projects so to cover gaps in uh, different teams staff assisted with uh, management of book collections and making sure that um, everything could be accessed and distributed electronically uh, electronically and um, so I had my head in lots of spreadsheets um, and during the lifting of restrictions I began working on site again and had a further opportunity to be involved in different areas of work um, so I was actually involved in scanning print books to send to users um, and here is where I had my first glimpse into copyright and the rules of the content limits um, and this was really interesting um, and complex in a pandemic where copyright risk um, and access often kind of clashed and there was no real clear guidance of what could be done. Um, but I remember having really useful meetings with supervisors about copyright and grey areas and found that very, very interesting. So. So my new skill set and experience helped me secure a new full time role actually in the University of York in the next round of vacancies. So I got what was offered a split role and this was a joint role between customer services and acquisitions. Um, and this gave me even more knowledge and practice with copyright, such as document supply requests and the rapid interlending system. Um, I also did a social media comms thread promoting this rapid ILL service at the university and I became really interested in copyright rules and around its development, um, both kind of nationally and internationally too. Um, so I graduated um, with my library information masters in January 2022 and I began thinking about progressing into a more specialised area in libraries. Um, I wanted to stay close um, to where I was, so I began looking for new opportunities in Yorkshire. And the role at York St John University Library came up and it met my criteria. So it involved different parts of library work. It was local, I could specialise in something and copyright awareness was required. Um, but they were going to train me and get me up to speed um, with kind of the legal aspects and how it works within this university. Um, so I had a detailed training plan in all of the three areas of my role. Um, so lists of webinars, um, which is where I was introduced to kind of the copyright literacy um, network, um, along with the mailing lists. I revised the existing copyright pages. Um, I have a series of mentors. Um, so Lisa Moore is my mentor and also my predecessor um, at York St. John is now a manager and she was my internal mentor. So I was really lucky there. Um, I had training with Jane and Chris as well online, um, went to Ice Pops was my first big conference into kind of the copyright world. Um, and I've also kind of been doing a year long Moodle audit as well to kind of get my head around kind of teaching and those kind of things. Um, so I'll just talk about some of my reflections. So going from a large research intensive institution to a small teaching based university with just me in the role was really, really scary. It is quite rewarding, uh, especially when I can delve into a query to find out the process for myself. And again, I'm really lucky that the previous ho post holder is still there. Um, so I can use her as a sounding board um, whenever. <laughs> Um, and there's so many branches of copyright, it can be very overwhelming at times, especially with the different application and user group queries. Um, for me, having oversight and responsibility of copyright for teaching, personal study and publication queries can be quite challenging. Um, so when I turn uh, attention from one to the other quite quickly, I'm making sure that I follow all the steps. Um, but also kind of finding my copyright interests as well, which kind of includes um, open data and rights retention and things like that and I'm looking forward to kind of delving into that further. Um, so yeah, there were all my slides. Wow, thank you so much, Megan. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Megan. Yeah. Uh, again, what another lovely set of slides. And thank you. A fantastic story. How interesting it is to hear all those different backgrounds. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So 
Um, we've got a little bit of time um, for questions. We wanted um, to make sure we just have five, five or six minutes. Um, so if you have any questions, um, you want to pop into the chat or you want to raise your hand for, for Eugene, for Megan or for Liesl, um, I guess we would quite like to just start off with a, a question um, which we'll just give you each like less than a minute to answer but like can you give us a taste each of you maybe we go in the order you presented what was the what's been the most interesting copyright query you've had to date um and shall we start with Lisa? i don't know if you need a moment to think about it and eugene i'll go to you next and then i'll go to megan Lisa, what's what's been your most interesting query to date i think probably the best one that is coming to mind has been actually helping academics protect their own work. So we had right. recently a case of an academic having some of their work plagiarised. So that's been really interesting. Uh, OK, fascinating. Great. Good one. Thank you, Liesl. Uh, Eugene, have you got what's your you've got so much experience so what, what's been the most interesting or or just something that you think is interesting maybe not the most because um, it's probably not probably not the most interesting but definitely the most satisfying was uh one where one of our academics uh, wrote a, a consistent piece of work about slavery and um, her work was picked by Netflix to be adapted to make a documentary oh, and, wow. and uh, now having Netflix as her backer her negotiations yeah. with the publisher were from a position of power so it, it was very interesting to discuss our discussions and discovering the uh, connection with Netflix. So we started to push the publisher as much as possible. It was so satisfying. Wow, that's really interesting. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Megan, have you got anything uh, that's come up in the last year or so? What's the most interesting thing you might have had to deal with? Um, so one that I was particularly interested in is um, an academic asking about um, work in different archives because um, they were creating um, a video um, presentation um, but it was going to be recorded externally and they wanted all these different permissions and it turns out that all of the archive material had gone like um, through different hands and, public, and the journal ceased and um, yeah, I think some of them turned out to be like orphan works and things like that. Um, so kind of like delving into, yeah, trying to trace all these different owners and where to go. I found that quite, it, yeah, it it was a nice query to deal with. Um, took me a couple of weeks to get everything sorted, but I really enjoyed it. Oh, that's great. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always, and I just like hearing, you know, your, in your presentations, your experiences of how you go about dealing with those things. Eugene, I'm just reflecting on your take time to do it. I think that's another thing as well, isn't it? If you're in this position, sometimes you mm. can feel you need to instantly give a response. And these things actually, like Megan, your example, they're complex and mm. there's lots of different strands and layers to them. So sometimes you do need to to mm. take your time yeah i like eugene's idea of drafting the answer and then like sleeping on it and looking at it again the next day yeah i, I tend to just rattle through mine and get them off as quickly as possible but maybe that's <laughs> just maybe i need to take a leaf out of eugene's book yeah um if you do have any questions then you can put them in the chat you can raise your hand anyone um please do feel free to ask anything um it's been fantastic really mm. interesting um have you got a question no, I was just thinking about Megan's philosophy um, qualification. Whether yeah. That, does, does that actually, do you find yourself drawn into philosophical discussions about copyright or do you try to avoid that? Um, oh, I try to avoid that. Yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got a question from Simon. Um, he says he's always keen to hear what you found to be the most effective. So you mean most effective as in getting the message across around copyright, I'm guessing, Simon. Um, would anyone like to say, yeah. you know, so, yeah, Eugene, yeah? Uh, yes. So um, uh, as a 
obviously not not a native speaker um, i had to learn all the language the library language so mm. in the beginning i was using you know small words like for children and it would take me quite a while to express something that uh, some of my colleagues could have expressed in three words you know yeah yeah, yeah. but I, I i found this quite useful when talking to academics um, give them simple example very relatable mm. examples from day-to-day mm. -day life experiences yes yeah. really helps really helps instead of using um, high powered expressions that i mean now we are all familiar with them but the academics are not familiar with them no i think that's a really good point i think it's something i've experienced is and working with someone who's a real plain english advocate in the past in a previous job that actually the simple straightforward words these people we're working with are clearly extremely intelligent but they're yeah. human beings and they don't need to process all that jargon it's fine for us to talk about it when we're in our community as shorthand yeah but i think that's a really important point um, yeah yeah right I, well we are nearly getting to time we've got we a minute left thank so, you so yeah, much yeah thank you um, ever so much to all, all our, our um speakers that's yeah really been fantastic i'll just get our final slide up yes. chris um and uh we will um we will let these good people get to their lunch yeah and, well, but don't go until you've seen the final slide because of course we are telling you what's coming up in future sessions we do have one that i think will be of interest to everyone uh lovely to see all the thanks coming up in the chat uh, so there we go here we go so actually we do have a rebooking a new date now for the third party copyright and research outputs uh briefing uh Claire painter uh professor emily hudson and professor tanya applin who wrote this guide for ukri they are speaking in their own capacity as independent um, experts um, and advisors, they're not speaking for UKRA, but they will be talking about the process they went through yeah. to write that guide. And it's going to be really interesting to for all of us answering questions about so we'll uh, get that advertised get as well, well in advance, yeah, but yeah. be the usual. It's a Friday, 11 o'clock. We'll mm -hmm. be recording, etc. Yeah. So that's when we'll see you next. And I we've think. got other sessions lined up. We are making good progress with our copyright anxiety research project. So we will be talking about it in due course. Yeah. Uh, the cross-border licensing event I mentioned, we're hoping that we can get some people to talk here about what happens yeah. across Europe and, uh, and across internationally as well. Um, so we're just sort of lining that up. Um, controlled digital lending, I'm sure, will come up in future. Uh, any other topics that anyone wants to know about, please let us know. Yeah, we have a form on the website if you want to suggest um, a speaker or mm. a topic for discussion. Um, and I suspect we'll be returning to the topic of AI as well at some point um okay. so but yes um so one last thing one last thing this is just to mention I, I i don't just make copyright jingles and novelty theme tunes i actually play some proper music from time to time I really call it proper music. yeah so i just thought a uh, little bit of uh, uh promotion here this it got recorded a session i did in london in balham with my uh, my friend anthony also known as tony as in we are aka chris and tony and also my friend CJ, who plays drums. The three of us played at this country music event. Um, so there's three of our songs there. They've captured it quite well. If yeah. you want to have a listen. That's me playing a, a lap steel guitar. Which uh, is his latest obsession. So Yeah. So, so thank just, you. Thank you all, everybody, yeah. for coming and joining us. And um, we won't play the video. We will let you get on. Um, and uh Thanks to our speakers again. Yeah, thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you very much, Megan, and thank you, Lisa. And uh, we'll we'll and get that date in your diary. Yes, fifth to the sixth of September. We want to see you in Leeds. Yeah, excellent. All right then, bye.